Hey, 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 here we go. Welcome, folks. It's 8 o'clock. It's the magic hour. I'm sitting here in my green screen studio, way, way hidden in a deep part of a recessed part of New Jersey. Uh, hi, I'm John Peasy, and welcome to Cool Crap We Love, episode 11. And tonight is going to be too much fun because we have Larry Wilcox with us, who, by the way, we're just speaking to off the air. is a wonderful guy. Uh, I always say this, the kind of guy you want to hang out and have coffee with. And uh, he's that kind of guy. So we want to welcome you. Thank you all for showing up. And uh, before we get started, tonight's theme is going to be the shows from the 70s that were more or less um, cop shows, which we all grew up loving and enjoying. And uh, in order to get started, we're going to need to bring on from a hot, steamy upstate New York room, <laughs> my partner in crime and co-partner here, Mr. Walt uh, Pupa Pipolio. I believe that's how you call it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Let me What's tell up, you Walt? something, man. Let me tell you something. Number one, take that picture yeah. off of there. Me sitting in a chair with a big <laughs> fat stomach with that salmon colored shirt on. You every surprised. time Where I get in now? trouble, every time I get in trouble with the town the town that I work at, they put that <laughs> picture on the front of the newspaper. Do they really? Oh I, yeah, I heard, that's the one. Get now, rid of I that one. They don't know I make up the promo for these shows. So I was grabbing all these things off the internet. And I said, I, when, I, when I throw these up tonight, he's going to be laughing his ass off. <laughs> Especially that one. I hate that one. That's the one with the paint. Well, there's a couple other ones I'd be embarrassed about as well, including your MTV t-shirt tonight. What's that, <laughs> What's that over? Oh, I love it. It's cool. Yeah, wow. I remember that. I know when that, I remember when that was moving and popular in the 80s. It was like, whoa. Big. It, was, it was big, yeah. They're still, they're still an MTV. They just don't play – they don't play uh, – videos on it anymore right i don't yeah, know yeah but it was it was groundbreaking in the 80s when blondie came that went out and all these yeah you know, mtv came out as a music channel and i remember it was great it was great music it was television that's what it was yeah but then it came out and then it just kind of like went south later on and you know i don't know it was really cool in the beginning how, how you know what the way, you know what the first video was uh the first video no what was it video killed the radio star by the buggles Wow, that's a that's a. I give you one of those. That was the first music video on MTV. Is it really? I also uh, remember there was a there was a rocket shooting off the space during their promos. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, that was a and big thing. Said, this, this would be uh, this would be up on the uh, the moon in three D. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was yeah, really cool. I remember it. I remember uh, it. And you spelled my name wrong in the promo too. Did I really? Papaleo. You put the I after the L instead of the I before the L. I, I, well, I say it wrong every night. The least I could do is spell it wrong. I mean, come on. How am I ever going to get famous? <laughs> hey, look at that. Another night with John. Hey, welcome, guys. Hello, Latifa. Hello, Cher. Hello, Nancy. Hello. I see you. I Sue, spy you. Sue Walsh, you see, a Sue is the reason we have Larry Wilcox, by the way. By the way, Thank again, you, Sue. <clears throat> Larry's a very cool guy. I could I could tell right now. I I want to bring him in as early as possible because he's really uh, easy, no heavy lifting. He's a real nice dude, very cool guy. Easy breezy, right. it's cool. So uh, tonight, no, I didn't. You know, this is interesting because I haven't looked at the photos that you prepared. Okay, for tonight's show. Generally, I you'll you know, know. I, you'll I, know, and, and I don't know what, what's coming up. And I wasn't a big fan of cop shows even there was one cop show i did like um the most was uh the one with the guy with the eye he was like ah i'll figure out the, uh, that and colombo colombo and Columbo. kojak and kojak oh and kojak <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know if i gave you kojak it was but kojak, that, that, kojak or kojak or something like that well kojak was telly savalas with the the lollipop oh i'm sorry I a, i'm thinking a night stalker i'm sorry what was that one? Oh, that's kolchak Kolchak. Kolchak. I didn't give you that one. I, I, I'm trying Kolchak, to check the night stalker. I'm trying to display my ignorance slowly at the beginning of the show. So, <laughs> uh, so okay, yes. Yeah, but Colombo. Colombo is, uh, you know, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, hey, look at this. Uh, why, why would you be wearing uh, red shoes on a Tuesday night? That, you know, that's what Colombo would do. Thank you, Tiffany Wilson. Colombo and Kojak. Columbo, we have a new listener, William Hubber. Why does William have Hubbard. a woman's face? Well, it's 2020, William. You could be a woman if you want. You know, it, it's it's what's downstairs that counts, really. Uh, that's that's the truth. It is what's downstairs. Once again, <clears throat> excuse me. I have to. I have a cough button here. 
<laughs> there it is. That's I got COVID. one too. That's my, <laughs> that's my that's COVID, my COVID hand. button. The COVID button. Yeah. Speaking of which, I did a show today. This is so stupid. Unrelated here, but real quickly, I'm doing a show today in, in Staten Island. And in the middle of my show, it's a camp with families. And middle of the show, they said, you have to put your mask on. I had the, the dummy out. And they go, you got to put your mask on. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I got the dummy out. I'm talking with the dummy. You got to put it on. There's an inspector here. I'm like, okay. And I'm putting on this mask. And no, I'm not going, you, the dummy. The, over me. And I'm talking with, and a guy comes over to checkboard and looks around and everybody in the room wearing masks, the separations. And he's like, check, 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 check. And I'm over there going, hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and the dummy's like, I can't hear you. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's so stupid. Then the guy left. And I got to take the mask off. <laughs> I got to be honest. I can be a ventriloquist if you could wear a mask over your face. It's this classic ventriloquist joke now. However, it was just stupid that it actually happened. It's just so stupid. I was socially distanced by these people by at least 100 feet. Never mind 30. Try to connect with people that are at the other end of a place. You know, like you can't even, <laughs> can't even see you. you. You can move you. I can say bottle of beer and Peter Piker picked a pack of pebbles and they couldn't see because they were so far away. Even with young, young so far away. It's so stupid. Yeah, but they had the show. They had the show going on. Yeah. They heard it. They had it. Yeah. And it's all good. It's all good. Uh, oh, look at this. Somebody wrote, if you keep awesome guests like Larry Wilcox, we'll be regularly watching. You see that? People love Larry. DJ Economos. Yeah. Apparently, that's what we need to keep this one guy coming in. That's what everybody else doesn't matter, but he does. Thank We're you. We're trying, man. We are We're trying. trying. Here we are. So we see are. who else you can get us for next week. That's right. You hope this up. <laughs> So uh, anyway, let's bring up some. Let's talk about. Let's. That's why randomly we're here. pick them up. Let's randomly talk. pull one out. Let, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, let's let's randomly pull one out. So I'm bringing up the first one. Okay. The cloud. Uh, he was very popular. So Dennis Weaver. Dennis Weaver. Yeah. Are we? Now, he was. A, he was. A, I, if I'm not mistaken, he was a New York City cop. Correct. I don't know whatever I wasn't town he was in. Metropolis. Okay, but he used to drive a horse. <laughs> yes. yes. Right. I mean, I, I I probably watched this, but I thought it was something that we should bring up because it was rated PG, and it, it's just something different. It wasn't like somebody on a motorcycle. Anybody could ride a a California Highway Patrol motorcycle like like the Chips guys, but the McLeod guy had a horse, and he had a really you know, it's not like you just pull up to a gas station and fill it up. You know, you got to you got to feed it. You know, hey, is that the Karen's World Trade Center three behind them on the, the underneath your head? Is that number? Is that the World Trade Center number three? Uh, no, I don't three? think so. No, we're gonna have it to looks, look at it. Let's see. Let's it see looks if really BJ, BJ Colisimo over there could find out uh, what city McLeod was in for us. Do a little research for us. Yeah, please, please. Um, my girl and team daughters like them too. We're in. Oh, they're in East Tennessee, BJ Conomos. They're very good. They're big fans of Larry. Here you go. Ah. Uh, awesome. Emergency and Adam Twelve. Yeah, the Adam Twelve. All right. I don't have I don't have emergency on here, but I do have Adam Twelve. We may or may not get to it. Yeah, we're doing the best we can. Adam Twelve was right here. <laughs> <laughs> Season Adam six. Twelve. I did watch. I used it. to watch this all the time, and I liked it. It was great. Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, if you go previously back to the '60s, what was the one with Joe Friday? And that was uh, Dragnet. Dragnet was great. It was great. Yeah, it was better when it was remade with Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd, though. I know. I really liked the the character because J- Joe Friday was like you know, well, Joe Friday. The, two, the two strong characters and the other, you know, the, he would walk in the office. Who was the other guy? that Was with Joe Friday? Well, Harry Morgan wasn't Colonel Potter one of those guys? Colonel Potter from Mesh, I think, I think was, correct. was one of the guys. I think you're correct. I think he might have been uh, Joe Fry. No, Joe Friday. He I was the straight laced guy. Yeah, yeah. But Adam but I- Twelve was great because they, they they were like '70s cops. If I'm not mistaken, I believe there was a big twelve on their car. You always saw it, like they had the number of their car. And yep. then, I, all I remember from that show is one Adam Twelve, one Adam, Adam Twelve. 12. But <laughs> and that's how they knew to go to the. The call. Joe Friday's character, Joe Friday's partner, though, was the way he would, he walked like a robot. And he would like come in and and go. They would talk. They would talk very like 
like robots. It, I, if I was, I was, I was him talking to you. I would say, "Hello, Walt. I just found out there's a new problem on Route 112. I have to go down and find out." You say, "Okay, sir." What's that was it? Joe yeah. Friday, wasn't that? That was Joe Friday. Well, what about the other character? He had they, they the other character robotic behavior to them. He didn't bring up Dragnet for a reason. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I do remember Joe Friday though, because Dan Aykroyd played him in it. Harry Morgan. He was Thank Harry Morgan. Harry Morgan. Thank you, Sue Walsh. That Shit. was uh, that was in um, that sh the uh, Dragnet TV series. Yes, and uh, it said on the roof was the number. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was the twelve. And look at this. Uh, besides chips, I have Emergency seasons one through six. These are big fans. How do you like that? I don't I really know if I'd be bragging about that, Tiffany. <laughs> I don't have a savings account though. <laughs> Larry and I were born into a family-owned and operated motorcycle shop. I was a, why 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 do we care? <laughs> it's why not? It's so fun. <laughs> and Colombo was in California. And no, Dragon that the movie was horrible. Yes, it was Harry Morgan as Bill Gannon. That's right. Thank you, BJ. Is Bill right. Gannon? That's Bill right. Bill Gannon and Joe Friday. Oh, uh, there's our Booker of Talent, Mr. John Galasso McLeod from Dallas, New Mexico. Dallas, New Mexico. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he was in New York. See. You're right. See, all he right. was in New York, so he's going around New York City with a horse. Uh, Larry, Larry Wilcox just texted me. He liked sheep. I don't know what that means. <laughs> See, we're not kidding when we said this guy, Larry Wilcox, is a pistol. He is a pistol. He's got a good sense of humor. <laughs> I, I appreciate that so much, especially people. He's he's a real down there. All right, this one, next one up. Here you go. The beautiful. Oh, I loved it. Loved How it. You remember what that was? Um. Uh, Angie Dickinson, who insured her legs for over a million dollars. Um, by the way, she is beautiful. Really oh beautiful. Oh, my God. Well, oh, police woman. Police woman. The TV Angie show was called yeah. Police Woman. Her and, and Earl Holloman. But I used to watch it just because of her, man. She was a she was a hot piece of booty She's back then. Police woman. Hot piece. And remember, there was that big thing about her insuring her legs for a million dollars. It was in, I remember seeing it on TV Guide. Was that her? Was that her, or was that the girl from Entertainment Tonight? Oh, I thought. Whoa, that's interesting. You, no, I think it was her first, and then Entertainment Tonight later did same. Lisa, same thing. whatever her name. Lisa was. Hartman. Yeah. Lisa Hartman. Hartman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Angie is, a beautiful this, one. is she still around? Do you think? I don't know. Somebody should really look that up. Is Pepper Anderson still with us? Yeah, that's a good point. That was her name, Pepper Anderson. Pepper Anderson, Streets of San Francisco, with Michael Douglas and yeah. Carl Molden. I don't. I never understood how Carl Molden was popular, and 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 that show was even popular. I don't remember. I remember always thinking it was so mismatched of a gig, you know. You know, they, I, if I remember that right, it used to be in the streets of San Francisco. Tonight's yeah. episode is yeah. the murder in the tent city. Yeah, that's exactly the way it went. <laughs> that's exactly the way it went. Charge TV airs chips from four to six in Kentucky. Better to watch than the news. See that? It's still playing. Oh, man. How Thank you, you Ruth. Yeah. Thank you, Ruth. Charge if TV. If I ever get to Kentucky and I want to I want to waste some time watching chips, now I know what it's on. I go to Kentucky every year at the ventriloquist convention, and very often I eat right on the border of Cincinnati, Ohio, at the... Uh, at the, the uh, boathouse. <laughs> the boathouse. Boat uh, here's somebody else from Kentucky. Emily Knight in Kentucky. Come on. Emily Knight looks like she's actually on The Bachelor or 90 Day Fiance from oh. that photo right now. <laughs> we, have a bigger, we have a bigger picture of Emily Knight? Uh, cut it out. You're a married man. Here we go. Mar Mary Hart is a huge trumper. Well, then you, well, I'm not even going. To, we don't do politics. We don't, we don't talk politics. <laughs> I, I could just listen to the comments all night. Charge also airs uh, chips on Sunday nights too. See that just being twice a week. And Butch Seltzer says, "But great legs." You're, yeah. Let you're me right tell you something. That. And I was telling, I was telling Larry this before. When I, when I, you know, the the promo in the beginning, I put that on a whole bunch of nostalgia pages to let people know that we're doing this on Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Do you know how many people have come after me because of the whole thing that's going on with the cops right now? They were calling me names because I was doing a cop show. Oh come on! Yes, well, I, I, were attacking I, me. You know I don't get they wanted political. To, they wanted to defund this show. I, let me tell you, I don't get political, but when it comes to the men in blue, I uh, there's good and bad of everything. But for the most part, we I, sure I'm there is. happy that they're there. I, I love the policemen. I Thank like you, sir. Yeah. yeah, I let's bring up another set of cops for us. Then. Yeah, I'm I'm not looking to get political, but that's come on. We you know I don't. Yeah, believe people were attacking me. 
I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been helped by police, many, many times, and how many tickets I've been saved on the road speeding. This so, is why I love these police shows. Mannix, come on. Uh, Mannix was great. I watched it a lot. Apparently, you were on there. Look, you and I were both on there back in the day. Yeah, we like. were both on that. A lot yeah. of people don't know that, but we they were on that show. They don't remember. They don't remember. Thing, I, I there. was the one. I used to have a, a an affair with Peggy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Larry Morgan Mannix was, a, was Mike, Mike was Connors, right? It was uh, Mike Connors was Mannix, and it was it was just like a, he would solve every crime. He was great. So Larry Rose is saying Larry was on uh, Hawaii, uh, on five zero as a terrorist. I didn't know that either. You see, these people know more than we know a lot more than we know. We're going to find out from Larry at, at the eight thirty hour. Uh huh. Dusky and Hutch I have, and the original SWAT I have. Wow. Uh, maybe Larry Wilkinson can get ships back on Me TV. We have been able to watch it for a couple of years now. You know, in Tennessee, oh, this, you know, a lot of people are watching Me TV. I've been hearing a lot of that. I haven't seen it, but it's popular. It's extremely popular. Dude, BJ. Go go down to to Broadway and and have a drink, bro. Leave. Forget about the chips thing. Mike Connors, that's right. Mike, Mike Connors, Connors was Mannix. That was Mannix. Oh, remember Larry Wilcox was on the Partridge Family. Listen, I, we're gonna get to really? Larry Wilcox later. All right. <laughs> we got to bring him fans sooner the better because everyone wants all to talk these crazy. You know, man, imagine if we would have got Eric Estrada. How many people would be on here watching? Is it, well, actually, I'd rather talk to Larry. Yeah, I like I like Larry, the you, got, you got 11 you have 11 minutes to get Eric Estrada to join <laughs> us. You have a let he's busy brushing his teeth. So look at this. Remember this 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 Mrs. Peel. This is one of my favorite shows. I would watch this was hard to get on for some reason when I was a kid. It came on weird hours or something. Yeah, he was Avengers. hot as hell. And why she was hooking up with that English guy. I have no idea. But didn't she didn't they have the hat that was metal? You could throw the hat and hurt somebody with it. Was a no, he that had, was in a James Bond movie, you no, nut job. That was no, odd dude. job. I'm he telling didn't do you, that in it, did he? I'm telling you, this guy had tricks with the cane. He had his hat. He had like it was almost like he was like a Superman. He had like he had this you know special little tricks that he could pull out. I don't know if the cane was a knife or I think the hat was a piece of steel or something. It was. It, it I was remember things. watching the show for Mrs. Peel. Yeah, she was hot. She was hot. She still look at. I, I wonder if she's still with us. Because I'm, my guess is she didn't age well. I don't know, man, but I do. She she's almost like the Catwoman kind of thing. She got that great look. What, what well, was Catwoman? That? Didn't Catwoman? Julie Newmar. I saw a picture. She didn't age that well either. Yeah, she didn't. Huh? What was the name of that woman? Who? The, the, her real name? Yeah. I don't know. Tell Johnny to check that out for us. She was on Game oh, of she Thrones. Was on Game of Thrones. Larry Rosen. He's a friend of mine. That, see, every I I know a guy named Larry Rosen too, so maybe it's the same one. You think? No, it's I not. Don't I don't know. Larry Rosen. There's probably four million Larry Rosens in the world. You're probably right. Miami oh, Vice. Saved this. You should no. save this for him. Yeah, you're right. Well, he's going to talk about Miami Vice, but th this show not only was a great show, but it had a great soundtrack. I I think I bought this soundtrack and I used to listen to it. Jan Hammer did the the original theme. Yeah, you're right. And uh, this this whole show created a whole new genre look. of how you look and dress and walk. Everybody was wearing jackets with rolled up sleeves and the comics in the 80s and 90s. And were a T-shirt. Yeah, it was really popular. Bobby Collins. That's Bobby Collins' look. <laughs> yeah, that's Bobby Collins with, with smaller teeth. <laughs> but you remember their names in the show? No, no, I don't. No. Go ahead, hit me. I'm gonna. I know it was it was uh, Tubbs and Cro Crockett and Tubbs. Okay. I think it was Sonny Crockett and Ricardo Tubbs. I think that was their names, but it was definitely Crockett and Tubbs. Larry you auditioned for Miami. How does Ruth know all this stuff? Is that Ruth, like is Ruth like Ruth, you, you're a wife, stalker? Wife? He's a stalker. <laughs> Quincy, that was another great one too. That's right. I had Quincy. I, I saw Quincy. It was a medical Did examiner, you? Jack Logman. I just sent you a picture of the chips team with me. Oh, I have to send it to my uh, uh, email account to grab it now. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that after the show's over. Galloway, Ireland. Big fan. Get out of here. Eric. I, that's what I'm thinking. Are we being punked like suddenly you have people from all over the world? Next thing you know, you're going to hear Mustafa coming in from, from <laughs> Rodan. <laughs> I love my friends. Coming in from Baghdad is Mustafa Hussan. <laughs> yeah, I love Larry Wilcox. I want to we, see. We listen to chips all the time. Well, it could be from uh, all the way in Ireland. I. 
Good to see you. Uh, and who's my buddy? That's my breath. That's my best friend. No filter, Ron. Is that you know, no filter, Ron. You know, no filter. <laughs> no filter, Ron. I put him on the air right now, but we don't want to get in trouble. No, no. After my advice. There you go. Season two. One of my favorites. Was Vegas. it? Really? Yeah. Dan Tanner. Yeah. Yeah. This was great because he used to drive around in his convertible, like one of those old '57 Chevy convertibles. And solve crimes, but this was after the rookies. He was in the movie The Rookies. He was yeah. also in Soap. He was he was uh, Danny who killed the uh, Danny. What was his name? Peter Dan Campbell. Oh, Peter Campbell. Okay, mm -hmm. he was Peter Campbell in Soap, and he was in The Rookies. No, he, I'm sorry, SWAT. He was in SWAT. Correct. Uh, I think his name was Street. Go ahead, tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> Kid, his name was Street. But he, but when he was in Vegas, that's what made me want to go to Vegas. But this was all done before they put in the Fremont Street Experience because he used to drive through the streets of old downtown Vegas. I love the Fremont Experience. It's really cool. They got a zip line down going down now. I did not know that. I haven't been there in years. Well, in, in between buying crack, you can go down a zip line. It's pretty cool. Oh, uh, well, they should sell it from the ceiling. I only got a couple of All right. Ah. Oh. Ah, okay. Well, this this was like this guy was like the. Uh, hey, I see you one eye. Well, look, we're Illuminati people right now on screen. We're <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, now he was uh, like the heartthrob for women. Uh, Magnum back. PI. Yeah. yeah, he turned out to be like. Did he? Did he do the commercial for um, Marlboro Man? Reverse mortgages. Oh, is that what it was right? Right. Hey, I saw him the other day doing reverse mortgages. He was uh -huh. talking about him. He was really slow. Was like, you want a reverse mortgage? I'm like, what happened to him? I want, but he was in Blue Bloods. Big, big Blue Bloods guy. Larry was on MASH, according to Stephen Cachace. Cachace? You know what? I don't think we need to bring Larry on now. It's, and then somebody's saying he's Blue, blue Bloods. So I, look, I, he's done more things. <laughs> it's amazing. So, you know, we're not going to be able to ask any questions. We have fifty over 50 people right now watching. And um, everybody see loves Larry Selleck. Popular. Kathy Hubbard. Everybody loves Selleck. Yeah, he was great. Let me buzz through a couple more of these so we could bring Larry, Larry on. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see. Okay, this is another one. So this... Um, was one of my favorites as a kid. I remember growing up with this guy. Beretta. Beretta. Now, that was Tony Beretta. It was Tony Beretta, right? Tony, Tony Beretta, Beretta played by Robert Blake. Robert Blake. And that, yeah. was, that was Fred Bird. That's correct. And who was the pimp with the with the over the – Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear. I would and never was, grab that. I knew oh, that. Who was that? That was um, – Huggy oh, Bear. Man, I know the guy's name. You know his name? No, I do not. Off to my head. No, no. Oh, really. I was thinking Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, but that's uh, Freddie Boom Boom Washington. His name is. <laughs> it'll come to me. Watch. We'll be talking to Larry, and I'll be like, ah, "This it's is gonna his hit name. You. It's going to hit you." Well, I'm sure, guys, somebody in the chat will have it for us. I'm sure that uh, Anton that was... Anton something. Is it really? You think? So? Yeah, Huggy Bear is. Uh, Come on, first person to chat to give it. We'll send you a free Andy doll. First person to chat, to give me Huggy Bear's name from the Beretta. Antonio Vargas. Ah, too late. I get it. I already got it. An Andy doll. Antonio Vargas. Vargas. Ah, okay. All right. Let me buzz through a couple more of these here because we're we're going through them really quick. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We 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 can't tell that he got off from murder charges. He killed his his wife. No, he's supposed to come on the show next week. I don't want to talk about that. Now. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry about that. Yeah, that, sorry, Robert right, Blake. That, he was also that, in the Little Rascals, by the way. That's right. That's the big thing. The big thing. Yeah, that yeah. was Dick. He was Dicky. You could kill your wife, but being in the Little Rascals wipes all of that out. It's all good, right? He was Dicky, right? And then he turned into a Dicky. Yeah, there you go. That was uh, Barnaby Jones. wasn't a wasn't a big fan of that show. You watched that? Me neither. But I like Lee Mer Merriweather right there. Yeah, Lee me Merriweather too. was the Catwoman in the uh, Batman movie. That's right. You can't go wrong with that. And Buddy How Epson about... was supposed to. Oh, I love this show. Did you really? Loved it. Get it. Christy I Love. I wasn't into that. I wasn't into that. Yeah, get Christy Love, man. She was a. She was a. Woo. I think if I watched it once, it was a lot. I don't think I watched it. Yeah, she was a badass, man. Christy oh, Love. You were really doing nothing when you were a kid. You were really. 
I did nothing. You 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 were actually in the middle of COVID in 1970. <laughs> I started it. I started it back in 1970. The COVID, the uh, quarantining. Yeah, you, you're quarantining all by yourself in the 70s. I, I, I've been self quarantined since 1973. All right. How about the? Oh, look at this. My favorite. Starsky and Hutch is almost for a minute there. I thought it was Paul Provenza. No, I that's think. David Soul and yep. Paul Michael Glazer. Oh, I, I remember the effort. How you pull it out? You just pull them out of the hat. It's amazing. Yeah, what do you do for baseball and football people, and you're like right. Wait a minute, was, was Huggy Bear? What, what, Huggy he had, they had a pimp too. They had somebody they went to. Um, are we getting them mixed up, Huggy Bear? I, I think Huggy Bear was in Starsky and Hutch. You know, um, I I don't know. Yes, Huggy Bear was in Starsky and Hutch. That's right. That, I think you're right. I think the other one, the, the pimp that he had in the other one, uh, that was O.J. Simpson. That's how they that's how they, they talked about murder. Right, right, right. All right. <clears throat> Let me buzz through a couple more here real quick. So I do, I do really uh, didn't remember really watching that show very much. But this one... There you go. We know what that one is. <laughs> I can't believe that you don't remember this after we were in it. Yeah, we were in that show. I, I kind of remember. I, I do remember next standing next to Larry. Where was I in front of Larry? That night? Yeah, I do remember that. Who's, the, who's that Who's that guy in the white suit? Is that Jeffrey Ross? <laughs> it looks like him. We, I don't know. How did that get caught into the mix when the guy's in the show? You shouldn't have that one even on there. <laughs> that was why that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Loved this show. Why? Loved it. I watched it a little bit here and there. Hondo Harrelson, Street, uh, DeLuca, Art. and TJ. I forgot I forgot the African-American guy's name. Uh, and, you know, I'm probably going to – Rod I'm Perry probably, there. Rod Perry. Is that right? <laughs> well, TJ was the sharpshooter. I know that. But th this show was great. And every episode, Les Leslie Nielsen was the bad guy. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that guy's like – Gates Foundation spent any of the seventies watching all this crap. No, no, he was, he was building he, a computer in his in his garage. That's why he's a billionaire, and me and you are sitting here in a basement. Yeah, but he's <laughs> going to be going to jail, and I'm still going to be free. Okay, if you say so. No, we don't do about moonlighting. This was favorite show, <laughs> one of my favorites. It was really big too. She was hot as hell as well, and uh, he became like a huge star after that. He, he, you know, he, and then he went from there yeah. to all of the franchises with all those copies. The Die Hard. He, Die Hard. He yeah. actually filmed Die Hard when he was making this. But anybody want to take a guess what Bruce Willis's real first name is? Oh, why? You know Bruce Willis's real first name? I do. Uh, okay. Son of a bitch. His real first name is Walter. Was it Walter? Rooster was the pimp in Beretta. Rooster. See, it was Rooster. I knew it was Huggy Bear was in. in uh, Thank you, Angela. Catch in, uh, never Huggy seen before. Hutch. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, you Angela. Yep, there you go. Uh, Steve Hart's the first guy driving the RV in the first SWAT movie. If you see him really good at the end, huh? Uh, yeah, oh, Steve Forrester. Actually, Hondo was in a couple of uh, uh, episodes of Twilight Zone, also. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Best cop show, Car Fifty Four. Where are you? That's another another old one too. That was that was. That's not that's a comedy though. It was a sitcom. Yeah, with Fred Gwynn and that Grandpa Al Lewis. Grandpa Al Lewis. That's right. Hey, uh, this one. All right, so that moonlighting was great. Here's a TV guide. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Natalie I used to. Work. Yeah, the, the beginning of the show, like the 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 uh, the, the the beginning of the show. It would it was it was always by the guy up top with the cigar. I forgot what his name was. And he used to go, <laughs> when they met, it was murder. You're right, you're right. And you but is it me or Robert Wagner looks like his like he was airbrushed his his head into a into a helmet. I gotta be honest, he looks like one of your dummies. Yeah, because if you look at my airbrush pictures, look at my forehead. Yeah. See my forehead? <laughs> I have no lines on my forehead. I don't know who did that. I have no lines on my forehead. And then I looked down at his picture and I'm like, who got the same airbrush artist? Apparently. Well, Ro Robert, Robert uh, Wagner in that show was uh, actually, he's more, he's, he's the guy who was on the boat married to Natalie Wood when she drowned. Ha well, allegedly. Uh, uh, she drowned. She drowned. Yeah. Well, uh, that, well this show, I love this show. How, how she drowned. Yeah, this, this show. 
I watched religiously. And then later on after where they come out with a six million dollar woman too, didn't they? The bionic woman. No. What was it? Bionic called? woman. Bionic. The bionic woman. Yeah. What was her name? What was her name? Oh uh God. It's eluding me. What was it? Jamie Summers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they and they and they were both reporting to Oscar Goldman. And the guy who made all of the 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 the, the things that they used was Rudy. He yeah. worked back at the place. Rudy, the Did old you little guy. We remembered all of this. No, I remember all of this. Damn, this show I really love. I Lindsay remember Lindsay Wagner. Lindsay Wagner, Wagner was the bionic woman. Cute girl. And I remember in the beginning of the show there was like something like, "We can make them stronger. We can make them better. We can build them stronger." And they show you like them working on them, like it was uh, you had the metal in them, and you, you know, almost like RoboCop kind of a thing. Um, Six million dollars today, you can't even buy a, a right pinky. I, you know, I would like to watch that show again. It would be interesting to watch. I That's would like great. To uh, uh, who's your McCall? Ted Cassidy was in there when he fought Bigfoot. Remember that one? Yes, I do. I watched that a lot. That was a great show. Hey, this is another classic. Everyone loved that show. How do you not like that show? Hasselhoff, David, Michael Hatton. Knight. Yeah, Michael, Michael Knight, Knight was Knight Rider, and mm. uh, I think the guy who was. John Hinder, Hilder, Hilderman, that was in the um, the Magnum PI, the guy in the back. I think he was the voice of that car. John Hinderman or something. I think you're absolutely right. Heart to heart was special, close to my heart. Lionel Stander name. Lionel Stander was the guy. Ah. When they met, it was murder. Yeah, Jamie murder. Summers. There you go. Jenny had Jamie Summers right. Don't forget the show that Jamie Garner was in. What was that? The Rockford Files. Come on. Oh, right. The Rockford Files. Oh, God. Kit, Kit was the name of the car. Kit was the, Kit on the, charge, the, yeah. the name of the car, Michael uh, Knighthead. Right. Right. William Daniels. Who, who's yeah. that? We all have DVDs. Jack Brother? Oh, it's Seltzer. William, oh, William Daniels was Kit. Kit. Ah, the name. Ah, ah. All right. I sat in the Kit car. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Tiffany, I thought my life was sad. <laughs> I was in the Batmobile. Huh? <laughs> Were you? I wasn't. I don't want to sit in the Batmobile. I want to do a show on Batman alone. Uh, let's see. I just saw Listen, Larry, Larry, Larry. Rabbi Walter. So uh, let's let me just blitz with one more. Thing. I want to get Larry in here because I know he's been waiting. As a matter as a matter of fact, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Great, great show. Great. See, I was I was wondering, I didn't watch a lot of shows, and I thought this wouldn't go as well with you and me because I was thinking, well, I don't know a lot of the cop shows. But everyone loved this show. 1970. Are like you kidding me, man? Do you know, I remember sitting, babysitting a kid while watching this, like in the 70s. But what baby some some lady was going out to disco dance. Like yeah. she learned how to do the hustle. A guy used to come to the house and teach her how to do the hustle. Yeah. As this guy, Johnny, he with these the Guido guy, and he would come over and show the girl how to hustle, and she, her and her husband go out, and they would do the hustle, and I remember watching this while babysitting this little girl that was sleeping. She's sleeping. I remember watching this. And uh, <laughs> Let me tell you Farrah Farrah let me Fawcett. tell you about this show. The funny thing about it is, is Farrah Fawcett is the blonde down the bottom. Mm. Jacqueline Smith is the, the brunette up top, and Kate Jackson is the one that is, is to the left there. And yeah. I always loved Kate Jackson because I never thought I could get Farrah Ford. Like, while everybody else was drooling over the other two, I felt like I was the only one drooling over Kate Jackson. <laughs> so I, I, had, I had her all drooling to myself. So you're Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island. That's what you're saying. You go for the underdog. I go for the underdog. She was, she, that's why I, put, I actually had your face up there first. And then I changed it and put mine because I wanted to be next to Kate Jackson. I understand. I understand. I, I, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy hanging out next Little to Little trivia. Before I, we bring in, who do you call it? Uh, Larry. What do you call it? Thank you. Fawcett? Yeah. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett? Before we you know bring you know in, can I, can I get that gift where you say, before I bring in, what you call it over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> can we bring in, what you call it? Who do you call it? Uh, the uh, Farrah Fawcett, Farrah Fawcett, believe it or not, that it sucks. She had a great career, and she was one of the biggest sex symbols on TV ever. Yeah. Um, and she had the unfortunate luck that she literally died, which would have been big news. 
Farrah Fawcett died. Except she died on the same day, same day Michael Jackson died. That's true. That is very, very true. So you couldn't you couldn't even mourn Farrah Fawcett that day because everybody was talking about Michael Jackson. It's Sam. funny. It's funny because I was trying to remember my my, my Farrah Fawcett joke. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I remember it. I got to tell you, Farrah Fawcett was so popular. You remember the show Battle of the Network Stars? Yes. Where they, they used to have Channel 2, uh, you know, people that from Channel 4 and Channel 7 would all compete in events. And Dick Van Patten was like this huge tennis player. And it was known. And Farrah Fawcett was going to take on Dick Van Patten in this tennis match. And they literally fo followed it like the beginning of like a, a Mike Tyson fight. Like they were following her, getting out of the car and everything. That was the funniest thing that, that I've seen with Farrah. I think I remember. I think I think I do remember that. And I did watch that show because you used to watch them walking around in shorts and bouncing around and all. That, you know, it was kind of, and last the rookies, the rookies. There you go. Who's, so your face is over Kate Jackson's face. Oh, on her. Yes. Uh, no. So Kate Jackson was that that nurse outfit that we had, that you have. Oh but yeah, that was a great show too. You're right. You're right. There you go. Yeah, that was Kate Jackson, and that the 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 uh, African American guy was George Stanford Brown. He was also in. Uh, I think he was in uh, Roots. Like wow, you, wow, you're pulling it. You're pulling them all out. You're pulling them all out tonight. That's beautiful. And Michael Onkin, who's the middle guy, Michael Onkin was also in the movie Slapshot. Imagine if you use your intellect for good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry just said, did Battle of the Network Stars. My uh, was my girlfriend in the first movie. I did Farrah's first movie, and she was my girlfriend in the first movie. Gotta, we got to talk to Larry about that All now. Right, bring Larry. Bring yeah, what are we waiting for? I mean, what, what you call it? Let's bring what you call it in. How Let's rude bring what you call it in. Larry Wilcox, he's famously known from the TV show Chips, which is California Highway Patrol. Uh, Larry, he's been in a bunch of movies. He's been in a bunch of TV shows. Miami Vice. Let's let's bring him in, let's Larry. Him in. By the way, Larry uh, has got some hell of a career. I was just looking at uh, you know stuff. He was he's he's from California, but apparently he was originally from the Midwest, and he was a, a cowboy when he came to California. Wyoming, Wyoming. Oh, Wyoming. He's an American actor, best known as his role in California Highway Patrol officer, later Captain uh, John Baker in the television series Chips from 77 to 1983. He's a Vietnam vet as well. He races Marine, car. right? He holds Bonneville uh, Salt Flats land speed record and is a private pilot. Uh, that's some hell of a whatchamacallit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but did he watch the rookies? That's what I want to know. And should, should we play this little video before we bring him in or just bring him in? Bring, yeah, play his video. Play some of his video. I want to, I want, uh, this is something that people, I don't know if people know this or not about Larry, but Larry had made, uh, was asked to sing. Uh, and he made a song called Me and My Chips, which is a music video. And he has a good sense of humor about this. I'm not embarrassing him. We have his approval. It's not like we're, we, you know, we're doing anything nefarious here. But and you can get this on ringtone if you'd like. Yes, you can. <laughs> I came home late last night. Just as tired as a man can be. Didn't you set me right? And I know you were needing me. Get them with their shirts open. And there's one thing that can get me through. Just knowing I come home each night. There's nothing else could ever do. How do you like that? I have the 45. <laughs> Jenny, you're pathetic. Look at this. All the love for Mr. Larry. Nothing for us, right? Nobody's saying it's stars. Why is Cher saying hi, Max Gale? He's not here. <laughs> Evidently, she's three weeks behind. All right. This is Actually, people, but, but people are digging this. <laughs> I 
another one for the one. People are digging this though. They're really I, mean, I get tons. People going, I want the ringtone. Everybody wants it. <laughs> My ringtone, Jen, Jenny. You had better be his daughter. Get <laughs> Eric Estrada. <laughs> Eric Estrada probably said, he, he probably wants this thing buried as far away as possible. <laughs> It's great. It's great. I, I want the ringtone. Yeah. I'll take it. This is almost as bad as when Eddie Murphy says, My girl wants the party all the time. I love and a lot of people have a 45. Great video. I bet you didn't know who we were getting tonight, John. <laughs> There's a hundred people watching this right now. I, I got a hundred people. Yes, and I got to tell you something too. Uh, as I bring Larry in here. <laughs> We just played that. I just want to make this that we do not own the client claim copy shit. There you that, go. Way, okay. that way it stays in and it doesn't get cut out. <laughs> All right. So anyway, hey, enough. Let, what you would call it? Let's let's bring. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Larry. Uh, I have to apologize for Walt. He knows everything about the '70s television shows, but he forgot your name for a minute. <laughs> I'm uh, John. What you would call it? <laughs> you, you could call him anything you want right now if you like. Yeah. Hey, thank you for coming on so much, by the way. And I have thank to say, you. it's amazing how many how much kudos you're getting in the in the chat. People are going crazy. This is I didn't. I, I'm not. I'm not discounting you, but I didn't expect how many people they. You really oh have. Oh my God! Watch you, love loves you. They go crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah, that was a song. big song. I was so you know that was along with the Intruders and Cowboys and Girls and My Girl and Temptations and then Me and My Love. What the hell happened? Where'd it go? <laughs> Larry, I, I want to be the first to thank you for joining us from your supply closet. No problem. No problem. I'm coming out of the closet today. <laughs> the garage, by the way, my man cave. I, have, I got my tools in here, my skill saw, my hammer. And, you know. Yes, you, yeah. Oh, sure you do. Okay. Are you a handy guy, Larry? Are you one of those handy kind of people? Do you do that? Yeah, I'm a handy guy. I like doing handy stuff, but I'm a little you know, challenge, but I really enjoy doing it. That's great. It's so cool. So listen, all these people, let's, can we go back in this chat way back in the beginning? Somebody had mentioned something about, uh, let's, uh, I, there was so many questions coming in here earlier that I'm not even sure where to start, but uh, there was, the, the people was asking like, first of all, you had told us off the air a little while ago that you were in the, with the, with the dog, what was the name of that? Lassie. Lassie. Oh, Lassie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it Lassie? Yeah. Lassie. But tell us about Lassie, please. Well, I, I uh, co-starred in Lassie in 1970, and uh, there were four Lassies, all laddies, because of their colors were bigger and uh, more uh, photographic, and uh, did that for three years. And then I went from that to doing all the Union 76 commercials for five years for the Dodgers and uh, Union 76 Gas. And then Disney movies and movies of the week and, uh, you know, uh, pilots for television series, one with Don Meredith, which was a blast when, you know, he was after he was off the uh, Dallas Cowboys and was a football announcer. Great guy. And, and then did movies like um, with Don Murray called Police Story. Don Murray was a really good actor. I liked him. Vic Morrow. I did a movie with him and really good actor also. And uh you know, just Angela Lansbury, Ron Masak, all those old people, the 70s and 80s, and had a good time. And uh, so Chips, or Lassie, was kind of a springboard, if you will, kind of got me going. So it was a nice beginning. They kind of, they utilized the young kid from Wyoming. And I did, you know, they I did all my own stunts, didn't know any better, jumped off railroad trains and did cartwheels <laughs> and 
jumped in the rapids and the river and, you know, on and on and on, but, uh, fell through floors and off roofs and didn't <laughs> know that a stuntman was supposed to be doing that. You know, I, I was the who, stuntman. Who did you play on that? Who did you play? Played, it wasn't uh, Timmy, right? Dale, Dale Evans. No, Timmy was before me. I played Dale, a young kid that lived uh, an orphan on a ranch and rescued all the animals with Lassie and so on. So it was a good experience. Really lucky good. to get my feet wet at that time. Big fan of New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand's great there. Yeah, I love New Maybe. Zealand. New Zealand. Maybe New Zealand. I when I was in New Zealand, it was like a wonderland. It was so beautiful. Uh, it was like its own. It made Hawaii look dirty. I mean, it was magnificent, you know. But a uh, long ways away. The look only one it. I know from New Zealand was there was a wrestler known named Tony Gurria, and he was from Auckland, New Zealand. That's the yeah. only time I, the only person I ever heard from New Zealand. I yeah. love the visit. Never saw it. I saw it. I watched television shows about. It. I love the visit. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. I produced a television series there called the Ray Bradbury Theater. We did it in Canada, New Zealand, France, and England. There's people but, from Canada right now saying hello to you too, as well. If all Canada. over Canada, New Zealand, <laughs> international appeal. It's amazing what television will do to you. That just because it keeps playing. One thing about television, even like the show we're on right now, which is not like chips clearly, but it lives in the air forever. Yeah. It it's cool. away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look at it, it's kind of funny, you know, because you say, well, how long was that show on, Larry? It's on forever, right? Um, five years, six years, maybe, you know. And then, well, why is it then after Turner bought all of the library from MGM, then it ran for another 25 years on TNT, and then Me huh? TV started rerunning it for another five or 10 years. And so, you know, you have this show that's never left TV. So, uh, you know, I'm grateful for all that marketing. You still and getting checks? I still but get checks. checks from that? Yeah, I got one right here, thirty six dollars and ten cents. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he had that unemployment. We're in good shape. That's right. Now yeah. look at this. Here you go, Hubbard from Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola, Navy Navy town. town. Yeah. Drove a truck, uh, a pickup truck, and Lassie also. Yeah, yeah. Nancy knows all that stuff. She's uh, been a great fan. You're a beautiful Tiffany. person, Larry. That's not coming from me. <laughs> Thank you, Tiff. Somebody from Kentucky, Massachusetts. My I, I get How it. are people watching this? Oh, big fan in Ocean uh, Well, it's Ocean Bounty, New Jersey. That's right uh, there. That's your wife. <laughs> that's not my wife. Stephen Keller's not my wife. Uh, <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Uh, hi, from Detroit. Detroit, Detroit. Larry. Detroit. Yeah. That's Jenny. I know oh, Jenny and her dog. Her. They came to the Comic Cons. She's a great girl. Uh, do you do a lot of those Comic Con things all over? Uh, those I did. I haven't done them in a while. I think I did every city. And, you know, you can't keep going back. You become a, you know, a homeless guy hanging around to sign an autograph. Yeah. But I did all of the major cities. Let me what ask you. What do they yeah. charge like 20 bucks for that, right? They charge like 20 bucks or something like that? Or well, they picture? vary. You know, they probably on the low end, 20 to the high end. Maybe five hundred, you know, for some people. Really? Who's getting five hundred? Captain Kirk? I mean, who who's that? Yeah, Captain <laughs> Kirk. He probably gets one hundred and fifty to five hundred somewhere in there and per autograph, picture. and he just wow. boom, boom, boom. He, you know, you don't say, "Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet oh, you." That's terrible. That's yeah, terrible. he runs. Well, now, all right, but now, Larry, Larry, if, if you have to, if you, I was going to yeah. say, if you have to lie about this, how much does Eric Estrada get? You can lie. 40. Forty bucks. <laughs> Forty yeah. bucks. He does. Yeah, and and he yeah. doesn't autograph. He bites it. Yeah, he Double bites e. it. <laughs> no, he signs it and gives him a kiss. <laughs> no. Hey. Uh, Larry, here's a picture of you that we have. Can you uh, want to tell us what's going on here? Look at this. Oh yeah, that was in my youth. What the hell happened? That's when I was a cowboy. That's in my one of my horse trailers. I was a roper. I team rope, calf roped, and. Uh, you know, I had a good time rodeo, and then I rode cutting horses for a long time too. And, you know, it fits perfectly over Walt's face too. It's kind of uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, look, crazy. At nice, look at how nice it is to have a young co-host. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was back in the day. How about this? This is me uh, during the Chips days. I was uh, flying with the Blue Angels, and so. Uh, they ask uh, in this particular day. They asked my wife and I to go flying, and uh, and Bruce Jenner went flying also, and so we uh, went up and did all kinds of maneuvers. And they tried to make me sick, but 
I love it. So I told him to hurt me. We had a great time. Wow. So you went, you went up in an airplane with Bruce Jenner? I not I didn't. He went up in the Blue Angels after I came back down and landed. So, Imagine uh, what would have happened if you two would have went switch times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Larry was a rodeo rider. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, wow. I, uh, ro I was a member of the PRCA, Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, and traveled around and rodeoed and stuff. I have a photo in my bedroom wall when I was a kid. How would you like knowing that a young girl is looking at your photo as a kid in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved it. And I met that young lady once, Sue Walsh, who uh, became an executive assistant to help me with everything from my website to you name it. She's been a great help. And a guy named Calvin Spiker has been a great help also. Excellent. Pringles. Somebody, you did a Pringles commercial in 77? Yeah, that was one of the early things I did. I played the cowboy and uh, for a Pringles commercial, and I forgot the actor I did it with. I liked the old actor. He was a good old Western actor, too. That's excellent. That's so yes, cool. Yes, thank you for your service. Let's get that right out of the way. That's the yeah. real truth. Yeah, we appreciate thank our you. veterans, too. Yeah. I didn't know he, knew, he knows you. So Sue's been on the show for a while. We, we see it popping up there. Here's from somebody from Florida. Hollandale Beach. Hollandale Beach. COVID Center. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Now we have to quarantine for 14 days because she checked in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Y50 was great. Uh, you know, we that was for the first time I think I'd been to Hawaii, actually. And so they flew me over and um, it was a great time. Really enjoyed myself. Indulgent young actor uh, getting the guest star on a big show, you know. So I was very grateful. Beautiful in Hawaii. Garrett. Are you and Chips cast still tight? That's a really good question. Yeah, that's a good question, but you get that all the time, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, with some, you see some and you don't see others. You know, um, first of all, I kind of segued into technology, so I'm not really around Hollywood, if you will, uh, very often anymore. So that's number one. Number two is I see Robert Pine quite often, who played Sergeant Gautreaux, whose son is Chris Pine, and a uh, big actor. Why do you know that? And uh, Robert Pine's a gentleman, a great guy, and just a wonderful person to be around. So I see him quite a bit. Uh, of course, I see Eric when we do the uh, Comic-Cons. And, uh, you know, Eric's entertaining and funny and full of energy and bouncing off the walls. So uh, you, know, <laughs> you just have to stand in the background and watch mm -hmm. him. And uh, But I don't see the other guys. I, I see Michael Dorn once in a while, the, the guy uh, – the African American guy that went on to be a, a big star, a bigger star than we were actually, and um, he did the Star Trek stuff, and uh, he flew airplanes. He had an F eighty six fighter jet and all kinds of other stuff. He's he's really a great guy, and uh, Lou Saunders, who was a great athlete and football player and so on, he came and did chips. I see him once in a while. Paul Link, I go to see his plays once in a while. He does one man plays and so on. So I see him. Randy Oaks, I. She was a really pretty girl. Used to be Joe Namath's girlfriend. And I saw her when we did a Comic-Con together, but that's the only time I've seen her. And uh, she was a great girl. I'm trying to think I who else. she's avoiding you. Yeah, I heard she's, she's avoiding you on purpose. Okay. All right. She <laughs> might be. <laughs> she might good. Be. Don't forget, Larry turned 73. Do you really turn 73 in 17 days? Yeah. Uh, wow. August, August 8th. Damn, you look yeah. really good for seven. Good. What? What is that? Is it that California lifestyle? And by the way, other people are saying happy birthday early to you and all that. Everybody's like, wow. Yeah. Well, I have a crass answer, but I don't know if I should give it ah, to you. you can hit us up. We have, we have people right. from Costa Rica. It doesn't matter. It's vitamin E. You got to take a lot of vitamin E. You got to okay. chew bubble gum and you got to masturbate. Okay, is, is, wait, wait a minute. I got the third part. What about the rest? Yeah. I got the I got the last two. <laughs> what is vitamin E? I'm sorry, it's a joke. It, that's a good joke. That's, that's a good right. Joke. I, I did notice one of your shoulders seemed to be a little stronger than the other. That's right. <laughs> you can see. It. Now here's a, here's a, here's a, look at this. By the way, love your sense of humor, Walt pa Papa Polio. Yeah. Ah. Thank you. Finally. I'll give you to that. Finally, somebody appreciates me. Where is she? She's probably from uh, all the way out there in the United Arab, Arab Emirates. <laughs> no, her name is Latifa Ajibad. I, I, if I'm, I hope I'm not That's doing what I'm saying. this justice to her name. 
Yeah, uh, I know her. She used to go bowling with Kaboom? me over in Staten Island. She's a good bowler, <laughs> by the way. For real? <laughs> Is she a good bowler? I'm a good bowler. I, 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 I'm a 210 average. I Maybe bet you are. The only three holes you stick your fingers in is up on top. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Always looking for an orifice. <laughs> you can go this direction. Larry, a little, little you can go this direction. <laughs> Look at that. People are saying, look great at 73 and all that. That's awesome. That's totally uh, So somebody asked here, and, and, and of course, which you've probably gotten many times before, uh, which, hey guys, which stream trips are no longer on Amazon Prime? I didn't know that. Somebody said, what's your favorite episode out of all of those episodes? The ones I directed. There you uh, go. Tow Truck Lady, and I forgot the other one, but uh, it was fun to direct them and act in them at the same time, indulgent and fun. That's good. That's cool. <laughs> now, Larry, uh, while, you, while you were younger and you were doing these shows, were you watching any other cop shows? Like, what were your favorite cop shows? Uh, let's see. My favorite was, favorites were Streets of San Francisco. Because, Call uh, Michael Douglas. Yeah, I did, uh, you know, I did a guest uh, star on that. And those, you know, Carl Malden was such a good actor and, and Michael Douglas was a handsome young guy. So it was really fun to work on that show and, uh, didn't get to do a guest on Charlie's angels. I don't know what the hell happened there, but anyway, How's it going? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I always liked Beretta. Uh, it was a good show. Um, I liked Hill Street Blues. It was a really good show, Ooh, really wow. good actors. And uh, NYPD Blue I liked. Love that. Um, you know, that's probably uh, – Police Story was an original series that they had different guests on every episode. That's correct. So it was a great story. Uh, I was trying to think the guy – Don Murray was the guy that I starred uh, co-starred with on that particular episode and he was a really good actor also Vic Morrow you know I worked to start co-starred in a movie with him and you know those kind of actors are uh, I in, the, in those days in my age I would write bibles on the character and I knew you know when he burped and when he farted and what his aunt did and what his grandmother did even though that's not in the script you know you write this bible and so uh to work with those kind of actors was just so much fun. You know, it was great. And MASH, those actors on MASH were terrific. Yeah. I mean, we would really break down everything about the actor and the character, you know. That Bible's probably worth a lot of money on eBay right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, so, who are you, Walter, John? I don't know you guys. Uh, Walt is the funny which guy. Which is even, because I don't know David King either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they said, why did you leave the show? Why did you leave before the show went off? <laughs> Well, that's oh, a, here we go. Yeah, that's a weird story. So you have to take a few minutes to tell this one. So, you know, I had done the show five years, and um, I had flown to Brazil to do a personal appearance in uh, Rio de Janeiro. That was a tough one. And we had a whole floor of a hotel <laughs> and champagne everywhere. It was really fun. And uh, <clears throat> I, I get a call from my agent who said uh, – Larry, they're not going to bring you back on chips next year. What? What do you mean they're not going to bring me back? And anyway, to make a long story short, I didn't know at the time. And so I hurried up and did a public relations announcement that I was leaving the show and and uh, beat everybody to the punch. And that really made uh, people mad. And But what really happened is uh, Eric Estrada had sued MGM and um, – he told, uh, and we had five years in the can, but you have to have six years in the can in order to go to syndication. And so if you don't have six years, you can't go to syndication, and then you have really no profit. And so they were in a catch-22 because Eric Estrada said, either you fire Larry Wilcox or I quit. So um, wow. he, I got fired, and I was a sacrificial item, and it went on one more year. Um, some people always ask me, you know, God, how do you do a Comic-Con with Eric after that and so on? How do you handle that? And, you know, I think it was just you had two young guys, both with egos at that time. I had as big as one as he did. So, you know, it's not all his fault. And I think that he he and his managers and agents, who I've always said uh, he had the wrong ones. But anyway, uh, his managers and agents, I think, gave bad advice. And the show probably would have gone on a long time, but it was a business decision. So I don't wallow in the misery of it. 
Um, you know, I hug Eric today. I like Eric today. I respect him. Think he made a wrong decision, but onward and upward because people that wallow in grudges and vengeance, they don't go anywhere. So no big deal. Onward and upward. I can't believe, I can't believe that. I never Great knew story. that. The one Great who was story. talking about him, do you tell yeah. that story a lot? Because no. listen, you have a $36.10 check there. That's and right. <laughs> I got one here too, by the way, for one cent. Literally one cent. That's amazing. They're it. playing that around. in in Dubai. They're playing yeah. it in Dubai on one of the stations. That's right. <laughs> Look at this. That's hi, Larry. That's How are you? Now Looking... go... Such a handsome. Now I got to go on these Eric Estrada pages and badmouth this guy. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. He's a good guy. So he's just young, right. and emotional, and from Spanish Harlem, Puerto Rican, wanting to prove himself and. God bless him. He, he tried. Oh, why did he want you fired? Why did he want you fired? I don't know. You have to ask him. I, I no, have no idea. Listen, come on, Walt. It's like whenever two guys, like it's the big, the big hen. You yeah. got to lay down the law. There's always, I mean, you know, if you have a bunch of cats in your yard, there's always one that eats first. It's, it's just, it's just, it's that macho, young, egotistical. And, and by the way, Larry seems like real at peace with it all. Like he realized, he said, he said himself that he was younger. You were, you had a strong ego too. And when right. we're, we're cocky, when we're young, you get stupid. You're like, you know, you're the king of the right. castle. That's but right. I get it. I get it. I just, king I, of the mountain, you know? Yeah. Now, did, did Larry, did Lassie ask to have you fired also or no? <laughs> no, I was housebroken. I have no problem. Was Ma Lassie a male <laughs> or female? That's another good question. <laughs> All males. <laughs> was, was it really? Yeah. And see, you called, him a, you called her a bitch. See, Paul? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And you can't do that now because you'd be sued. Yeah, me too. Like again. Male dog. <laughs> Here's a question, to Harry, uh, Larry, uh, David King said, "Did you like Dragnet?" Um, yeah, I kind of liked it because it was really oblique and funky. Um, you know, one guy was very straight and just said his line, rah, 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 and he looked like he was reading Robot and a terrible actor. But I loved but it. it. But it kind of fit the character, and it was interesting, you know. And uh, oh, what was the other one I liked to way back then? Honeymooners. That was way before oh, that. But the Honeymooner, that. Jackie Gleason. You know, he was so great. We did a whole show on that, and uh, we yeah. did, we, we did do a whole show on it. We were going, going to. We upcoming, never did. Upcoming, right? Yeah. Uh, and did you keep the bike from Chips? No, that's not that's no one, Ryan. I didn't. I uh, I probably could have. We had you know probably seven or eight bikes each, and really and, uh, we had. You know, Eric kept one. Uh, I think he kept one without the motor, so he has it in his house. And But, no, I didn't really <laughs> need a police bike to keep. But uh, I did. I'll tell you a little story about police bikes for just a second. We went through <laughs> training, you know, and we rode police bikes. I rode motorcycles all my life. So, in a way, it got in, got in my way. So, I went and went through the CHP training, and so did Eric. And uh, we had to wreck them and lay them down and high speed brake with the rear end coming around. And I mean, it was tough stuff, you know, but we got really, really balanced and good on them. So we could ride slow in a figure eight and do turns and, you know, look really cool. And just a tiny area, you think how that motorcycle is going to get out of that square. No problem, dude. We're good, you know. Yeah. And uh, so about oh, a year ago, somebody said, would you ride in this parade? You have one of those chip spikes, you know, I said, yeah, no problem. I, do you ride motorcycle? Yeah. Have you ridden recently? No, but it's no problem. It's like a bicycle, you know, but I'll, I'll well, I don't have a motorcycle anymore. I had, I sold all my motorcycles, right? I don't need a motorcycle. So I had to go rent a CHP police bike. And my wife says, Hey, you know, uh, you, you realize you're going to ride in this parade, right? Yeah. And there'll probably be police escorts and all that. Yeah. You don't have a motorcycle license and you never have had one. All through oh, chips, wow. you a motorcycle license, you idiot. So I, a license a parade. so I says, man, I don't want to get this nonprofit in trouble. So I got to go get a motorcycle license right there. So I go to the DMV and they, what? You're getting a motorcycle license? You don't have a motorcycle license. <laughs> so I had to borrow a guy's little Vespa because he's the only guy I knew had a motor, right? <laughs> Now I ride in the me me and my little Vespa, right? And I'm trying to do little turns and it oversteers because that little tiny wheel in there. It was a I, I don't know how I passed. I barely passed, right? But that's you know, hilarious. That's a great story, too. That's a great story. Look at this. Everybody's giving this guy kudos. Big Larry, God bless you. We wish uh, since nine years old. I still love the show. I have the episodes on DVD. 
Somebody said, tell them the he helmet story. Kathy Hubbard wants us to know, what's the helmet story? Oh, she's, I think the one she's referring to is, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I always joke about, they said, where's your helmet? I still have my helmet. Where's it at? Well, my wife makes me wear it when I go to bed, you know. <laughs> but I'm not sure what helmet story she's talking about. So. John, John's got a totally different helmet story. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, how about this? Will they ever make a final chips movie with all the chips cast for a final time with all the cast getting promotion? I, Has I don't been talked about. Has that been yeah. talked about? Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, you know, two things. They uh, they did the Chips uh, reunion movie called Chips 99. That was like 10 years after we had been off of Chips or a, a lengthy period of time. And uh, that was a they did a pretty good job on that. Director did a pretty good job. And then uh, I bought the rights to Chips and I was going to I thought I had it sold to USA uh, Cable and uh, with CAA was helping me at that time. And I wasn't able to get it sold. So I let the rights revert back to the owners. And uh, to make a long story short, you know, couldn't get it sold. And then along came the Chips movie that they recently did uh, with Dax Shepard and so on. And, uh, they, you know, it was, a, it was a movie that I didn't care for. But that re remember, that's one guy's opinion. So they did a movie and they were raised all the money. And I think they lost money on the movie. But anyway, they did it. And it wasn't my favorite movie. And I also thought it was an insult to the brand. Now, to answer the question... Mm -hmm. Would, is there ever going to be a chips reunion? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll segue. I doubt it at this age, but you know, would I do it? Yeah, maybe some cameos and you know, spoofs of these of Punch and John, but they are what they are. However, having said that, they asked us to do a battle of the network stars last year. Get out of here. Yeah. And so they call me. My wife's a former Olympic track and field athlete. I'm a wannabe, right? And so I, they said, well, would you mind doing it? I, said, uh, I don't know what I have to do, you know, because it could be really embarrassing and humiliating. Bocce. Oh, they wanted you to play bocce. No, they <laughs> wanted to, you're going to do a 100-meter or 200-meter sprint, and yeah. you're going to play basketball, and there's an obstacle course. I said, oh, I'm a Marine. I can do the obstacle course. Well, before that, I severed my bicep. Uh, by doing too many shoulder exercises. Uh, well, that's what you're saying to happen. It could have been those three things you brought up earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably the bubble gum. Probably yeah, the bubble gum. gum. Maybe bubble vitamin gum. E, but then you know. So. Vitamin yeah. E or bubble gum, one of the two. Yeah. And so uh, to make a long story <laughs> short, we go there and we are terrible. I mean, it looks like <laughs> these guys, you know. Try So Eric Estrada starts the first heat of the 200 or 100 meter race, and I'm the second heat, right? So I see him running. I said to my wife, look at him. He looks like a little Chinaman. He can't, he's, he's waddling. He can't even run. She says, shut up. You're next. <laughs> so uh, there my little tubby body took off and ran. And But you're in good shape at 73, though. You're physically in still good shape, right? You're yeah. I'm not bad. I'm, you know, I keep really active. So I can, if somebody wanted me to ride a motorcycle, I can do that. If they want me to rope a cow, I can do that, you know. Let me ask you this, though, because in, in show, this is, a, you're in showbiz, if, if yeah. you will. Yeah. So being in showbiz back in the day when at the height of all of this, when you really had a height of, of, of career times, through, I mean, you've had, that's a, I think, is, is this the thing that projected you more so into the mainstream? Oh, no doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, when we talk about the narcissism and egotism that goes mm -hmm. on with all of that, how does it feel to have everybody want you? Everybody needs you. Everyone want to take your picture. Everybody, you're the bomb. You're the guy. You're the this. Everywhere you go, you notice you're, you're, you're taken care of. Everyone sees you with a big smile. You, they come over to you and like, oh, Larry. And every, and you know, it's this, 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 you're walking around this make believe spinning around you until it all comes till you move to like Manitoba. Uh, so how did that, how does that feel as to, uh, to the ego? Does it make it worse? Well, well, how does that feel? I think there are phases, you know, the, the first phase for me was, wow, this is pretty cool, you know? Um, and, like that? and then the second phase was uh, typical male identity crises. Uh, you know, what arm piece, what car, uh, what income, what label are you wearing? You know, all the indulgent crap that men do sometimes, right? They, hopefully they don't do when they grow older. So did all of they that. Cold. This yeah. is cold. 
<laughs> right. And, uh, and then after that, I think uh, eventually it becomes kind of problematic in that you start fi finding yourself like uh, anxiety around all that. And you want to kind of be alone. And, and to this day, by the way, I prefer to just kind of be alone, you know, but uh, well, you not, have to be little, since March. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, but yes, March, uh, depending on where, what state you're in. Um, right. But I enjoy it. I, I'm grateful for it. You know, I, and I've met, by the way, a lot of the fans that we've talked to on here, I know through various ways. And you, you come to learn these people. And, you know, some are really interesting, interesting stories. Uh, even the actors was interesting. I won't mention the actor's name, but an actor told me recently, that I never took the time to sit and talk to him. Uh, you know, he was like a one-liner a week or whatever, and and it kind of hurt his feelings that I never asked wow. him about his life. So I was wow, I'm really sorry. I didn't think about it. I guess I was exhausted waking up at 5.30 in the morning, get home at 10.30 at night. You came in at noon and got off at 3. Um, but but I apologize. There is wow, wow. You, see, you, are not, you don't know how you affect other people, and that's another interesting thing. A lot of people don't know yeah. in television and movies. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. You're there early. You make up. You're all ready. But it's it's a lot of hanging around, and then you and then you're you're like on spot. The man, you're like a monkey in a cage, and you come out. You do your bit, and they put you away, and then they want you to come out and do the bit again. They put you back right. in the cage. So. You know, when you didn't talk to somebody that actually was offended by that, you're the big guy. You're the you're the top of the heap. You're the stars right. of the show. So that right. guy that's a little bit lower is looking at it like, well, you know, he doesn't even say hello to me. This guy's not the right guy. And maybe John, that's, how, that's how I feel, John, when you don't call me back. <laughs> like today. <Yeah. laughs> now, we were we were talking about this before. Larry, I'm going to ask you this question so people know. Okay. All right? Okay. Have you ever flown on the Lolita Express? Epstein's plane. No, never have. Now you know why I'm not calling right. back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just yeah. want to get that out there for the girl in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> now, but have I ever flown with the Ghislaine, the Maxwell? You didn't ask. Ghislaine that. Maxwell. Yeah. No, I haven't. <laughs> no. You're 73. You shot the attack. You shot yeah. the attack. As you know, but see, no, all right. So you're saying you got the thing about the ego thing going on and you were like, you, you know, you weren't the best person that you could be. And then later on you grew out of all that behavior and all that kind of stuff, right. but you don't, ha you don't look back at it and think to yourself, if you could do it again. Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, in order, in order to grow, you, you know, it's like a sprout, you put it in the ground. It can never be a seed again. You in order to grow, it yeah. has to start somewhere. So it's yeah. like, you can do it all the same way, Larry, you're not going to change nah. anything. I would, you know, I don't know. I think if I, um, I think I would have worked harder at uh, marketing because you're, you're basically a brand. And so how do yeah. you want to establish a brand? And a lot of people get misconstrued that activity as indulgence, but you're really marketing. You're trying to keep your name with sustainability, right? So that would have been one. Um, luckily I did direct and produce a successful television series for five years. So I transitioned intellectually and financially pretty well, you know, um, but still the business is ephemeral. What'd you do last week? And yeah. so, so don't get too carried away with yourself because that sustainability doesn't last very long. So what would, I, what would I have done better? If I think, I think that I would have been much more humble and, um, Humble. And, and submitted to the growth of all the actors and people around me more. So now you have a flower garden instead of a flower. It would have been a lot better. You know, that's all. Yeah. Sadly, that. Larry, next week, this is going to be the thing you did last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about acting, directing, and producing projects in the works? Uh, no, um, you know, I did a movie, a little cameo in a movie that I was really proud of. And it's a long story. So I won't bore you with it. Uh, it's about make a wish foundation and how it came about. It's because of the chips guys, Larry and Eric, and, uh, this little boy dying of leukemia and then this highway patrolman wow. got with him and let him be a, right. a, 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 a motor officer, if you will. Wish man's a very good movie. You rent it on Netflix. You'll enjoy it. I think I, I will. I definitely will. Um, but I'm just a cameo in it, but I'm with Robert Pine, which was fun, was the sergeant on chips. Having said that, am I doing any projects? I, 
it's really predicated on funding. So I have been wallowing in this funding thing forever, and I don't even want to talk about it. But if the funding comes through, yeah, I have about 10 projects I'm going to do. But if it That's doesn't, cool. I'm a focused on technology. And right now, my technology is UVC lights that kill COVID-19. So, Wow, cool. Larry, could, could any of those projects include John Peasy and I? Definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay. There, there's one guy milking Cameo. a cow, and That's another it. guy playing with a bowling ball doing something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. uh, listen, when uh, Larry, when he calls, don't answer. it. Okay. Yeah, don't <laughs> answer. That's the best yeah. way to prevent <laughs> at least At least that guy, Robert King, knows who we are now, or David King. He knows David who we are. Now. That's right. And while we're going to shoot it in Staten Island. What? Yeah, they Staten Island. Far. I'm oh. upstate New York. Oh, okay. You're probably up there by Niagara Falls, where it's colder than hell. No, not that far. I'm, okay. I'm by. Um, I'm actually by West Point. Oh, West Point. Yeah, by West Point, about 14 miles away. He's 14 uh, miles away from people that start to have teeth. Yeah, <laughs> that's the other All 14 right. miles. The other Did way. you have a data fan? That's a good question. Oh, that's no. a good question. Yeah, no, never have. Huh. Um, that oh, yeah. That's the really fine dangerous. date. Yeah, date. really. Yeah, right. It's, <laughs> it's all of the above. Don't define it. So uh, I think you don't want to do that, especially today. But, uh, you know, ever uh, it gets really dangerous. So uh, I don't think people you ever should date another actress. Did you ever date another act like a famous actress? Uh, He's not Sarah? talking about, yeah, not I'm not gonna talk about that one. I'm... Ah, see? <laughs> yeah. Finally. Yeah. A question. When, when you ask him All that right. question, you know what you hear? What? <laughs> Breathing? <laughs> Snoring. Uh, somebody asks, um, somebody asks here on the side, uh, is it true that you turned down Star Wars? No. Okay. No. Never got to <laughs> <of> Star Wars. <laughs> okay. No, I just, that's really, I, I don't know. And here's yeah, somebody. Star asked, Wars. Here's a question. Wait a you were in Star Trek. Oh, wait a minute. You, he, he was supposed to be somebody. What was the movie he was supposed to be in? What movie were you supposed to be in? I, I don't know. Uh, you mean Miami Vice? Yes, Miami Vice. Miami Vice. A uh, TV series, yeah. My, uh, which one were you supposed to be? I was supposed to be the star of it. Uh, uh, in, Dubs or instead Crubs, of, uh, whatever his name was. And what happened? T no, t uh, Crockett. Sonny Crockett, Crockett which Jamie was... Crockett, uh, yeah. So what happened? So I, I go in, Michael Mann was the, you know, Michael Mann was favorite, famous producer, director. And so I go in, Z, <laughs> some guys, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm putting him to sleep. So I go in and read for uh, Michael Mann. Michael Mann says, grease your hair all back and, you know, we're going to change your look, put stubble on you so you look like you haven't shaven. And you're, let's make you really different. You're a really good actor, but we need to change your look. Okay. So I changed my, you know, I'm an actor. What do you want me to be today? And right. so I did it and uh, they sent it to NBC. And next thing I know, Universal calls my agent and says, man, your client should have been a movie star. I don't know what the hell he's reading for the television series because he is that talented. We just saw his test for Miami Vice. And it's the best test I've ever seen since I've been at Universal. So my agent calls me and tells me all this stuff. I, the, the attorney that was at Universal was a friend. And uh, so he tells him all this. And I'm pounding my chest, dude, talent. talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they said, would Larry, would you come back and read with the other actors? Because we're trying to find another actor, the, the African-American character or something there. I'll have to go with you. Yeah, sure. Right. That's Tom. Tubbs. That was Tubbs. The next six months, I read with every actor in Hollywood. And they, but I, they all knew I was going to be the star and they were just reading with me. Right. Well, the writer producer of the show, young kind of guy, uh, he, he always didn't like me. He, he wanted more of a pretty boy kind of a comedic guy, right. That was witty and funny. And so right around Christmas, I get a call saying, Hey, we're really, really sorry. And we know you've put you through hell and, you know, NBC loves you. Brandon Tartikoff wrote in his book in, about NBC that Larry Wilcox was the best and should have done Miami Vice. And we're going to cast somebody else. Sorry. And it was Don Johnson. Wow. And so Don, Johnson heard, yeah. Don Johnson had already read for when I had come. He, and they already said they didn't want him. You know, they wanted me. 
but in the end, I guess this writer wanted Don Johnson. So, uh, he was throwing a fit. If he didn't have him, he wasn't going to write the series, et cetera, et cetera. And so Don Johnson got to go and Larry Wilcox went on. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I heard that Larry, I heard that Don Johnson and Eric Estrada are really good friends. <laughs> really? I don't know. Maybe. If anybody would it's know, crazy. that would be you. <laughs> yeah, but, I didn't but, go out when I was a kid. But I'll tell you, you know, having looked at the show now, the way I played it, and if you look at the scene I did, I was grimy, oily, mean, badass. And Don Johnson, I think, was a better choice. It was a, from a marketing standpoint, it was a, you know, he's a really handsome guy. And he was a real brandable character, a marketable character. I think it was the perfect choice. He didn't chew any gum. No. <laughs> he hated vitamin E also. That's right. <laughs> Wait, let me let this is a good question though. You said you were doing something with the UV lights. Now I read something or I watched something uh, recently that they said that in Vegas they were gonna put the UV lights uh, above ceilings, right? right? And they were gonna have a fan that doesn't blow downward, that blows reverse to pull air up. Right. And so COVID that would come into uh, when people come into a casino or a doctor's office or whatever, as they walk in, the air would actually be pulled up. So that COVID would go up and, th and that UV light would kill it and bring it back down as a as a disposable COVID death. Right. Is, that, is, that, is that, is that, is that, you don't even about that with these UV yeah, lights? The so, so, you know, there's, there are multiple forms of making a neutral arena, if you will, in Vegas or wherever you're a at. Neutral, an arena. Yeah. And what I mean is no COVID there, no pathogens. Wait so, a minute. I'm, I'm breaking your chop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking your chop. I love you. Go back good. to the bubble gum. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, what happens is what they're talking about is something called uh, titanium dioxide that pulls up the molecule into there, uh, separates the bonds, and then uh, it lets out the particles back into the air. There's no pathogens then, and it's not harmful for you. That's one. Here's the problem. Number one, when you have an ingress, egress, people have to come in and out of the building. So that place has to have a portal of UVC light of 128 nanometers to kill the bacteria on you before you even go in. That's one. The second part is you need to have an air consist air conditioning system, HVAC as they call it, an HVAC system that has the capability of moving, removing COVID and or pathogen molecules from the air. There's HVAC systems today that do that. You can put on your house that will remove all bacteria in the air. That's the second thing that's necessary. Now, the third thing necessary is what they're doing is kind of a Mickey Mouse way of doing it, in my humble opinion. But the third thing is very dangerous for human beings, and that's what we have. We have a light. UVC has various nanometers, 128 human being can withstand, 158, it'll kill you and it'll blind you immediately within seconds if you Perhaps see it. Exact. So we take that high powered 158 nanometer light and kill every pathogen in the world within nine seconds, 100 square feet. So we can walk down the bulkhead of a Navy ship, a submarine, a casino, your bedroom, whatever, right? And it, that's the third way of doing it. So that's our patented technology. That's fantastic. Well, you know, I, I, my secretary was making fun of me a year or two ago. I bought this little plastic light. Yeah, this big. This yeah, big. yeah. Do not, do not go near your sheets with that. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, was like, it was like seven. It was like seven inches. So, and it was it was a little white UV. We put the batteries in. You put it. So she would come in my office and she'd be coughing or have a cold, and I would like go over to my mouse and my pad and I I would wipe. I would take the UV light and wipe it up and down. And she's laughing at me, going, "You're an ass. Look what you're doing. You just yeah, that's that's." BS, that's not going to work. And I kept saying, no, I read about this technology. This kills all germs, 99.9% .9 of germs. <laughs> so I have yeah. to throw a blind You just light. lost 75 viewers. Yeah, but here, here's what, but it does, by the way. Here's the problem with it. You have mm -hmm. to have it within six inches of the uh, the substrate or the, the surface that you're trying to kill the bacteria on. So if you're within six inches, no problem. If you're farther away, it does nothing. How do you so, know all about this? 
because, you know, I'm part of the sales and marketing team. I'm a principal in the company. So, you know, I need to know it. And if I, if I do a comparative matrix of everything that's in the marketplace today compared to our product, if I can't win that argument in that sales and I'm just a bullshit artist, then right. I'm wasting everybody's time. So What's I have to that be, company. What's the website or Facebook or what is it for? Uh, we, for we don't want it. We don't have it. We don't. We don't even want anyone to know yet. We want to sign contracts with military experts and all kinds of applications, and then perhaps we'll release it. I, I get you. You're in the process of moving that around. Yeah. By the way, there is, uh, for you, you guys, there is another company I used to be associated with called Optech, O-P-T-E-C, U-V-C. Optech UVC. Now they sell the wands, which you were referring to that little thing that you go on here, but they make a really good one. And uh, they sell uh, a bigger one that, uh, that I don't really believe in called the Rover. And they sell some other devices that UVC that kills bacteria. So you could go there and order a wand online and get it in the next couple of days. You know? uh, does we see, this is fascinating. I, I, I didn't know. Cause I mean, I've, I've read some stuff about this. I've been reading all kinds of things and I even lead, read the far fetched kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. So, and yeah. I'm a conspiracy theories guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually believe Larry is part of the Illuminati right now. And we're all doing, <laughs> of course he is. I'm in a different dimension. I'm not Larry, by the way. <laughs> the North Pole is about ready to be the South Pole. They did. Have you have you seen the, the solar the flares league. coming from the sun? There you go. There, there you go, go. John. Hey. Solar flares. There you go, solar flares. Well, I've been talking about that for years. They always say this is well, – that's, that's not what this show is about. This show is about fun. As a matter of fact, you know what's interesting? I have some videos here, Walt, that I don't know if we should play them or not, but we have auditions and stuff of, our, of Larry uh, performing. All right. Like, I have the class oh, yeah. of 30 dozen. Uh, we, we have the Dalton gang video, and we have a video of uh, Miami Vice screen test. All right, oh, do yeah. the screen test on it. But more well, importantly, real quick, is anybody else making comments that they love me and think I'm funny? Uh, oh, we had two this night, so your ego is really up to check. Next thing you know, Walt's going to do is go <laughs> buy a big car. <laughs> That's right. He's going to get hair implants. He's going to lose weight with you. DHEA and testosterone. <laughs> do, you, do you know what? Yeah, right. Do you know what cars we got? Eric Estrada when he sued MGM, I had a favored nations clause in my in my contracts, which means favored nations, whatever he gets, I get, no matter what. And vice versa. Really? Over. Yeah. He got a brand new Rolls Royce, a white one with red interior. I got a brand black one with tan interior. Cornish, Cornish's convertibles. I'd wear my cowboy hat and drive that down. Uh, Hollywood and people say, "Hey, cowboy!" <laughs> All the, get the hell out. How how is a driver a brand new Rolls Royce? If you get that's got to make you like. No wonder why your ego blows up and you. Oh yeah, but, I I want that clause with you, PZ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. what? Yeah. You're, gonna get, <laughs> you're gonna get the re it's the realest thing in the world. Santa Claus is the only clause. You get. <laughs> I want yeah. that clause with you, man. Whatever you get, I get. That's okay, right. fair enough. I have AIDS. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I I sign off. <laughs> which which one of these do you want me to what you think is best to show do the Larry? Screen test. Uh, like, it's his stuff. Do, uh, do dirty. Uh, do uh, yeah. Do dirty doesn't because they're not as long. Okay. They don't want to watch Miami Vice. It's too long. It's really no. good, I think, but it's too long. Okay, here's. The, I'll do the dirty. I'll do the dirty dozen one. This is a quick uh, video of the dirty dozen. There you go. Good old Lee Marvin. Didn't seem like that much at the time. Get some. Uh... Souvenirs. I know. I've done it myself. Yeah, I knew you had. Only the army calls it looting. Oh, yes, sir. See, that's that's why you got to get me out of here. I'm not used to being caged up like this. And I joined the army because I wanted to be a soldier. I'll do anything you say. I mean, I can fight. I can fight. I can kill, too. I can blow those nazis to hell. I just want to go home with a chest full of medals. You know what I mean? I right, hope you do. We don't own this clip. <laughs> so that's the, great. That's yeah. really great. That was a so, that was a little crazy. You were playing like a little crazy guy. How's so this this was interesting. Else? This guy uh, Andrew McLaughlin was a great guy and six foot seven director and 
and he did, I did a, you know, when you feel like you're talented, you know, that you're talented when the same director keeps hiring, you know, just Larry, I'm going to do this movie. Can you come in? Yeah. And, uh, so they, they, the same thing. I did a movie for him called the last hard man and you, they write these scripts and they don't write any character. And it's like, what is this role really in here for? Right. And so you have to create something. So he shaves his head and he's playing artificial baseball. There's no base baseball. He's playing softball and pitching to people all the time. Right. And he has some weird mannerisms. And later in the movie, he's stealing the medals off the Germans and putting them on himself. You know, he's so proud of himself. So you're doing everything you can to create a character within a movie. And in the end, you have a, uh, sustainability, if you will. People say later, wow, that was a cool character, you know, or same thing. And with you Latin- yeah. And you created it. Created. It's not written in the That's script. Cool. Yeah. It was fun. Like we do with this. That's Jeez, right. We got to rock, man. We got to rock. We're an hour and 32. I know. Bro. I didn't plan on going this long. I got to tell you, I hope we do it again sometime because uh, Larry's a pleasure to talk to it. And I got to tell you, yeah. Larry, there's people, I'm, I'm amazed at how beloved you are across this. And I could see that you are really down there, but it's below in countries and countries. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how, and by the way, what you put out is what you get back. And so this is not an accident. You know, there's no accidents in the universe. Uh, yeah. More importantly, uh, I would hope to do this again sometime. It was, it's, it's so much fun. I, we, we really try to do a show, right? Walt, are you frozen? Walt? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> let me go. Let me get, let me back to Walt. <laughs> uh, actually, this, this is Walt's new laugh. <laughs> uh, I, think, I was going to say that this, this whole show is really about um, we want. I wanted to ask you, like, what's your favorite chocolate? What's your favorite movie? Where did you grow up? Who's the first girl that you wanted to date? Who's you remember this? You remember that? Nothing to do with with chips at all. And yet we right. yeah. went down the chip line because people really want to know all these things. They really want to hear all the things that have gone on. So it's really cool. Let me get rid of Walt. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Walt, I'm going to get a big, big new Mercedes, and I'm going to give you a Datsun, <laughs> 62 Datsun B210. I had one. I had a Datsun B210. Oh, that's pretty cool. That was a cool car. Throw it up. White Datsun B210. We're going to have the red, red seats with red uh, seats. Walt, right. I was in Vietnam. I'll be quick because I know you got to go. I was in Vietnam. We and- don't have to go. He has to pee. Oh, you know, <laughs> the prostate issue. Yeah, thirteen months in Vietnam, and they said, "Do you want to stay another six months?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm going to extend for six more months, so that'll I'll be here nineteen months in Vietnam, right?" And they said, "Okay, well, why are you extending? You know, we're right on the DMZ. This is a hot, it's a hot zone in 1967, 68, sure. and yeah. uh, because I'm um, this is how, what a hick I was, because in six more months." I'll have enough money to buy me an XKE Jaguar 1968. <laughs> I mean, what a retard, right? Uh, you did, did stay in Vietnam. Car. Yeah, to get a car. Car. Well, at least you didn't do it for a woman. At least you didn't do it for a woman. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, could have been. Could have been. Shoulda, coulda. Look at this. Speaking of, there's the picture of the uh, the bike. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bike you could have had. That's could've a phallic had. symbol. Yes, it is a phallic yeah. symbol. <laughs> As a matter of fact, back then it's hard. Today it's soft. <laughs> that's a hog. That's a hog that's a right hog. there. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's a pl- hey, so listen, people would like to follow up with you. Uh, I know this. Somebody said that you have a great Facebook page, but people that would like to see Larry uh, can go. There's a lot of clips of uh, Larry performances and the Miami Vice screen test, the last ride, adulting gang at LarryWilcox.net. And you could also see Larry on those pages actually singing that wonderful song that we saw earlier. <laughs> Yeah. Um, as well as you can download it and make it a ringtone for your phone. Ring so go to LarryWilcox.net right. to get that ringtone. I'm going to get one of those ringtones. How about you, Walt? Yeah, I'm going to pass on that. Oh, come on, Walt. I'm going to be on the- how to put a ringtone on my phone. Hey, Walt, <laughs> I'm going to be on The Voice next week, so you should see me on The Voice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> La- Larry, pleasure. Totally pleasure. Thank pleasure. you so much. Thank, thank you so you much, Larry. And thank, thank, you all. Guys. thank you for your service, pal. Thank you, you for your service. Like Except a Marine Corps. Corps. Very funny. All thank right. you guys in the back. Thank you, Larry. This is so much fun. We'll see you guys next week, and I hope you do it again, Larry, because you are definitely a gentleman. Too much fun. <laughs> all right. God bless. Bye-bye. Ciao, guys.
Take care. Thanks, by sure. the way, guys, Walt, what are we supposed to say here? Uh, visit our Facebook page and uh, YouTube. Like, like. Like our Facebook page and visit our YouTube channel. Well, there's one more thing. Subscribe. Oh, subscribe. And we want there subscribers. You. Yeah, subscribe. Larry knows all about subscribers. Yeah, all yeah. of that kind of stuff. And we'll, we'll be back. We would love to get a $36.10 check as well. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Free Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Ciao, Larry. Thank you, guys. All right. We'll pop it out. This was, so, this was so much fun. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Like, subscribe, and share. Share as much as you can. I really enjoyed this one out of all of them the most, I think. This was uh, too much fun to me. I'm sorry. I'm looking off to the left. I'm uh, looking off to the right. We want to thank you guys for showing up, and uh, you're all the best. Stay healthy is uh, what we want to say. That's the most important part. Like, subscribe, and We're not gone yet. I just made. No, I mean, believe we're we gone. Why are we gone? Why we have so much again. more to say. We should bring we're this not. like to the two-hour mark. <laughs> no, we're not going to do it. Goodbye. <laughs> we're still here. I don't know about that, Larry. We're gone. He's gone. He's, 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 I think he's he was lying about a lot of stuff. He's he lied about a lot of stuff. He's he's playing with his hog.